What is up, guys? We are back here for our fourth episode of our Steam Engine build in SolidWorks. Um, if you haven't been here for the previous three episodes, um, this is the current project we are working on. This is a model Steam Engine. As you can see, the parts list over here. Um, we are building each of these parts individually, uh, one at a time. Here are all the drawings for each of those parts. Um, it's a step-by-step -step walkthrough of this build. And in the first episode, we did these first four parts. Um, the second episode was a little longer. Um, it was based solely around this one part. This is the base, the, uh, the most intricate part in the entire assembly. And in the last assembly, or the last episode, my bad, we managed to get these next four parts done. So this episode will probably be much like the episode of the base, excuse me, in that we will most likely only be working on this one part in the entire episode. This is the crank rod. Um, it's a little more intricate and we only have 15 minutes to fill. So I will do my best to get this one done for you guys and hope you enjoy. So what we're going to start off with, as usual, is open up a new part in SolidWorks. Um, first thing we're going to want to model is this upper portion here, and I'm going to want to model it from this right side view. So, I want to go start a new sketch on the right plane. Um, I'm going to use a midpoint line here, you'll see why in a second. Um, it's for much the same reason that I like to use the center point rectangles, in that it keeps everything lined up nicely for dimensioning and alignment later on in the, the part as well as the assembly overall. So this air circle is diameter of 8, this outer circle diameter 16. We need to draw two lines on each side, each meeting up at a point of tangency to the circle here. And it's not uh, showing you that indication. Um, if you watch the little yellow indicators um, there on the bottom right side of the pencil, there should be, which there's not in that case, um, there is an option or there is an indication wherever the, the line being drawn is at a point of tangency on the circle. So let's, let's try it on this right side and see what happens. Um, well, there it is right there. If you notice that bottom right side of the pencil there, there's a icon with a circle and a line tangent circle that represents the point of tangency for that line to that curve. So we draw a matching one over here. It should be at the same spot. Uh, we'll go ahead and trim out that section. This is 23.5 millimeters wide overall. And so there's the top portion of the Part. Um, next what we need to do is make that cut out in the center. So this bottom portion here is four millimeters thick. So what we're going to do is go to the top plane, hold down control and drag this plane up and then select an offset four millimeters. So that creates a new plane parallel to the top plane offset by four millimeters. We can then sketch on this plane and we're going to sketch a center point rectangle, line it up in the middle there. Um, this cutout has to be 15 millimeters wide. It has to be centered on the part. So if we come here with the 23 and a half divided by 2, it should be 11.75. Yep, there it is. So now that we have that, we want to come and do an extruded cut and make sure it is in the correct direction going up and cut that away. Now let's go ahead and add in there. Oh, my bad. There is a series of fillets on the inside here of radius 3. So we'll go ahead and grab our fillet tool, radius of 3, and select these two edges here. There you go, now your fillets are done. So now that that's done, let's work on this lofted shaft on this part. And the reason I say lofted instead of cylindrical is if you notice at the top it is 10 millimeters in diameter. The bottom is 14 millimeters in diameter. Also, we notice the height of that loft is 64 millimeters. So, in order to do that, the first thing we're going to do is 
start a sketch on the bottom of the part with a circle in the center of diameter 10 and centered on the part, so 11.75 millimeters. All right, and next what we're going to want to do is use our, well, first let's hide the first plane, is use our offset feature again with the planes to create another plane 64 millimeters below the top plane. And on this plane, we're going to start a new sketch and grab our circle tool. Sketch a new circle in the center. Um, go ahead and put a point on the origin. I'll show you why in a second. Let's set that circle to a 14 millimeter diameter and center it using that point that we just created, offsetting by 11.75 millimeters. So um, the next thing we're going to want to do, let's uh, go ahead and create a um, a guideline for our loft. So let's uh, X out the sketch, start a new sketch on this plane, and we'll start a line from the edge of that circle to the edge of this circle. Now, if we go to Features, Loft and Ball Space, and we select this as one of our loft ends and this is the other, it will use that sketch as the guideline for that loft. And if you notice, as this goes down, it gets wider. That's what a loft does. It's used to create an extruded feature between two sketches or two features. So um, a few things we need to do now. We need to have a radius 5 fillets on the top of that loft, as well as some um, 3 millimeter deep chamfers on the bottom corners of that part that we just created a minute ago. So on this fillet, um, because the edges are weird, we actually have to use a face of fillets. So what you do with that is you select two different faces and you select your diameter, your uh, radius of your fillet. And it works just the same as selecting edges, except you have to select the two adjacent faces in order for the fillet to work properly. All right, and let's throw our three millimeter chamfers into Sorry about that notification, guys. Uh, into the bottom corners there. All right, that's looking good. And the last thing we need to do is this base. So we notice that it is 30 millimeters wide, 15 millimeters deep, and 6 millimeters tall with 2 millimeter deep chamfers on each corner. So let's go ahead and um, we can hide that second plane just to keep it out of our view. Um, let's go and start a new sketch here on the bottom using the, uh, the in the center of that circle to start our sketch. And then that rectangle is 15 millimeters wide, 30 millimeters long. And let's go ahead and take care of the chamfers and the sketch. Those chamfers were two millimeters each. So make sure you select each of the vertices of the part. There you go. Mix that sketch, go to our extruded ball space feature. Make sure that is to the right depth of six millimeters. All right, and let's also go ahead, create a fillet around this. Oh, my bad. Go ahead and swap back to edge fillets because they will work now. A fillet of a three millimeters around that bottom face as shown in the drawings right there and there. Now, lastly, we need to create these two holes on the bottom, which we see they're 22 millimeters apart, centered on that base, and centered on that base this direction as well. But we're not given a size for those holes. There was, a, I guess, a mistake when making the drawings. So if we go up to the assembly diagram real quick, we notice that the connecting rod, if you look over here on your right, um, or the crank rod, my bad, is a number uh, 13. If we go to number 13 here, we see that it's connected to number 12, which is the connecting rod, which we've already modeled. So if we now go to the connecting rod and look at the size of the holes on it, we will know the size of the holes for um, the crank rod. Here it is, the connecting rod. You can see the holes are 22 millimeters apart, which confirms that this is the piece which the crank rod attaches to. And it also has the same base size and chamfers. So 
if we look here, these holes are 4.5 millimeters in diameter. So we will go ahead and run off the assumption as seeing as we don't have any other um, method of figuring out the size of those holes that they are the same as those on the connecting rod. So we will make them 4.5 millimeters in diameter. So go ahead and start a sketch on the bottom face here. Go ahead and throw two circles into there. Make sure they're 4.5 millimeters in diameter piece. They should be 22 millimeters apart. And in order to ensure they're centered, just go ahead and set them, one of them, um, 11 inch, 11 millimeters, my bad, from one of the sides. And just lastly, to ensure they are centered um, in this direction, make sure that they are 7.5 millimeters from either of the edges. All right, and exit that sketch. Go ahead and come up to your extruded cut feature. And even though this is only six millimeters thick, if you were to keep the extruded cut six millimeters because of this fillet, you would have an overlap on those holes. So just make sure that you give enough depth to be able to account for those, account for those fillets. And there it is. Um, well, hold up one second. We do need to change the material. Um, and if we look over at our drawings, we see this is stainless steel. And we've been using the uh, chrome stainless steel for all our stainless steel parts. So we'll go ahead and apply that material. And that is done. So that wasn't too bad. We had a couple of new features which we haven't seen before. Um, this loft was something new. And um, if you guys aren't too familiar with those, or if you just want to know more about them and their uses, uh, I will be sure to get a video thrown together soon, which explains what a loft is and its various uses and how to use them effectively. Um, one other thing that we saw here was the use of face-to-face -face fillets instead of edge fillets. Um, that's not too uh, too over too much over anybody's head. It's pretty simple. Instead of selecting an edge to fill it, you just select the two faces between um, around that edge, and all the same parameters as usual, the the radius and whatnot. Um, aside from that, I think this was a straightforward part. A straightforward part. It took a little reverse engineering to find the size of these holes, but it worked out in the end. We figured it out. Um, so I think we are good to go. I will see you guys back for the next episode and we will get going on this which will probably be another um, full episode part this is the, the crankshaft so we'll probably spend an episode maybe even two episodes um, if we need to on this one part as well all right thank you guys for watching be sure to leave any questions comments or concerns in the comment section below um, make sure to hit that like button and also in order to make sure that you are notified as soon as the next video goes up, be sure to hit that subscribe button and um, I will be sure to get on to that next episode as soon as possible. You can probably expect a new episode at least once every two or three days, um, but most of the time I'm going to try and put up a new one once every day so that you guys aren't sitting around waiting for me to catch up so that you can move on with this project. I'd like to be there with you for the entire thing. All right, once again, thank you guys for watching and have a nice day.